welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, welcome to my channel. <laughs> All right, so this week we are going to be talking about working with the moon and what all the phases mean and what's best to be doing. First, I'm going to give some quick basics and then I'm going to go into actually working with the moon per se. So first, let's start with the new moon, which we just had one a couple of day, two days ago now. So the new moon occurs right after the dark moon. It's good for personal growth, releasing the old energies that no longer serve you or other things like people, etc., thoughts, negativities, things that no longer serve you. Healing, careers, love, um, a great time to start spells for new beginnings or just in general that you want to work on throughout the cycle of the moon, which I'll give more detail on later. Um, depending on the source, it's good to have five, seven, or ten wishes, aka like spells or you can make them spells or... You could write them down and try and manifest them throughout the moon cycle, which, again, I will talk about more in a little bit. Next, waxing. So this is when the energy starts to grow. So the further we are into the waxing cycle, or phase, sorry, phase, I'm a little sick, <laughs> if you can't tell. When, the further we are into the waxing phase, the the more the energy is, because the closer we are to the full moon, because it's going from nothing to larger. So spells with a purpose are important that are constructive, uh, with an intention of growth, moving towards your desire. So you can continue off of what you started with the new moon, make it more specific if you'd like um otherwise it can also be money health prosperity attraction luck courage strength success friendship love and all the things that we talked about with the new moon as well so growth creating things construction constructiveness is a keyword so then we have the full moon so this is a high impact time period. The energy is extremely high. Emotions are very high too. So attraction spells, working with the lunar goddesses, uh, maybe doing just worship of the lunar goddesses if you don't have time for the spell work on the full moon. Exploring and finding yourself, um, banishing unwanted influences that might be getting in the way of the work that you're doing doing throughout the full cycle, like long-term work, spell work, uh, and other influences that might be getting in the way of you with that, or just in general, as well as protection, magic, and spells, and divination. It's a time to restore energy. Uh, if there's rituals that you wanted to do, this is time for like high energy rituals. So very potent so if you've been working on a love spell for example throughout this is a time to do it again and put more energy and motion into it because again it's at the fullest uh cleanse and charge your altar tools crystals etc you can also charge or rather cleanse more so uh your crystals on the new moon and then cleanse and charge them again at the full moon and it's also a good time to work with like prophecy and ancestral stuff. Um, the waning moon is obviously right after the full moon. It's when the energy starts to be reduced and it slowly, slowly gets closer to the dark moon than the new moon. Uh, spells with the intention of getting rid of something, things that no longer serve you. This is a good time to get rid of obstacles, negativity, doing banishing spells, um, binding spells, banning things, um, such as illnesses. If you're working, if you've been working on health stuff, this is the time now where you remove that. Um, so an example would be like, if you're working with a full moon cycle, like we're going to be talking about in a minute here, if you've been doing, I'll use the love again. If you've been doing love spell work, this could be the time that then you do spells that 
get rid of any obstacles that may be getting in the way, even like your own negative thoughts or your own fears that might be blocking the work that you've been doing from manifesting. So, eat there. And then a dark moon is right before the new moon. Uh, this is a time to retreat. It's good for justice and law. Uh, ex exploration of like your own mentality, emotions, and traumas, and healing. A lot of compassion stuff, healing stuff, strength. Um, meditate and do worship or spell work with the dark mother or dark goddesses, such as like Hecate and Lilith. Um, it's a time for the crone's magic, taking advantage of that. So that's the basics. Uh, this portion is if you want to work with the full cycle for all your stuff and not just do various rituals or know when is the right time to do a spell that you might be wanting to do. This is working with the full uh, moon phase cycle. Uh, interesting fact, uh, many witches who have menstrual cycles begin to sync up with the moon cycles with the moon cycle um, when working with the moon fully <laughs> and the moon's magic and energies really start to affect them a lot more than the other practitioners who may just do spells at that specific time. I'm not saying this happens with everyone, it's just something that I've seen in a lot of books about moon magic and that I've read in various vlogs, or blogs, and seen in vlogs, and etc. And it happened with myself and some of my friends, so. Anyways, let's get started here. So, the new moon um, begins one to three days after the balsamic moon, or rather the dark moon, whichever one you want to call it. And it's all about wishes, planting seeds, planting your intentions, as we talked about in your beginnings. This is when you start to manifest your dreams and spell work. What you want, not what you don't want. That's for the waning cycle. Um, you can put your wishes and your focuses and intentions for the cycle, for the full cycle, in writing or draw it. And by doing this, you are putting it out there. And obviously, you're, you should say it out loud too, which happens during spell work. But putting it in the writing will remind you and to say the affirmations um, or create affirmations that go along with the work you're doing and saying them daily will help put the energy forth as well. Um, visualizing each of your wishes and intentions being true and actually happening not like saying i want this to happen you actually will say right and then visualize it as if it's already true um so like i said creating affirmations um create creating or setting up altars for the moon cycle so for example with the new moon in gemini uh putting on your altar the tarot card of the lovers can help with everything that you're doing and can be you know great to put out the energy yeah for your altar setup also having something five of something like five crystals or five coins or just vibe of something that's representative of other things that you might be doing for Gemini, for example. But of course that new moon just happened, so that's moot at this point. Um, giving gratitude, so making a gratitude list and saying it out loud during your circle or your ritual for the new moon heightens your vibration and your energy. Uh, center and cleanse yourself before doing any new moon work. So like a new moon ritual bath, for example, would be great. Smudging yourself and your place. This is also a good time to sm like smudge and cleanse your home. Uh, so write, visualize, and feel. You know, like I, I've said this in videos about spell work before. 
and candle magic specifically, um, the emotion and your feeling is really important for any type of work you do, whether it's candle magic, any other type of spell work, just meditation even, or just trying to manifest and put it out there or writing it a certain number of times each day. The feeling and the emotions are important and the thoughts that you're having because they can either help or hurt what you're trying to come to be manifest so um also you can write a plan of what you can do physically to help with the work that you're doing like what can you physically do and control concerning your spell work so for example i'm just going to keep using love spells since that's what i've been using before if you're doing a love spell to have somebody that you like um have some attraction to you okay you can start actually trying to reach out and communicate with them or, or something like that what can you do think about what you can do um what you, what's in your control if there is anything so spell work meditate and release any attachments that may hinder because it's a new beginning so it's all about new beginnings and focus. Using a, do a lot, a lot, a lot of focus during the new moon. Each new moon also has different energy and purposes depending on what position, what sign it's in. It also affects you differently depending on what house the new or the new moon is in. Which house of yours? Oh, you can tell I'm sick. So, for example. This last new moon was Gemini. My rising or ascending is Cancer. So it was my 12th house that this new moon was in. So that also affects what kind of work and what kind of focus might be good to be doing during this cycle. I will put um, in the description box a link to a calculator if you do not know your rising slash ascending sign because you need to know that in order to know which house each new moon is in so um, next is the waxing so this starts about three three and a half to seven and a half days after the new moon that's all like so the waxing is all about exploring the dreams and intentions that you've had, then blossoming and flourishing and beginning to manifest. So it's moving from being invisible to the full moon. So like I said earlier, it's starting to increase in energy um, and power, with power and strength. And that is, is the same for you and the work that you're doing. You might not be able to see the results of the work that you've been working on right away, but they should be soon starting to show some signs. Continue visualizations and saying your affirmations out loud and doing spell works, spell work and keeping your altar. Um, if you want to do a full new spell, it's a good time to still do new spell work that may be related to what you started with the new moon or is a little off and or that you just want to start doing. Like I said before, if you're not fully working with the full cycle, this is a good time to do spells that bring something to you and create and grow. Yeah, I have notes. <laughs> so things like love or money, as I said earlier. So you can start new spells that grow right now. If things are not showing yet from the new moon by the end of the waxing that you've been working on, take a step back and make sure that all fears or negative thinking is gone. During the waxing crescent, which is towards the end, you need to keep hope and faith alive and maybe if th there was some fear or negativity getting in the way preventing 
it might be a good idea to rephrase or tweak the spell work or manifestation work. Within the waxing, there are the first quarter and give, give phases. I never can say that correctly. <laughs> and during the first quarter, it's the seven to ten and a half days after the new moon, and it's when you commit to your work. If your ego gets in the way of your work, work on letting it go. This is a good this is a good time to refeel, visualize, imagine, and do a lot of work. Like I said, commit, commit, commit. After the first quarter is the gibbous. Gibbous. I suck at pronouncing words. Don't judge. Uh, and that's 10 and a half to 15 days after the new moon. So like right before the full moon. Um, stay with the chorus and the plan that you've been working on. This is really, really a good time to tweak and adjust if needed. And again, don't let your ego or fear get in the way of your work. Just because you still may not be seeing results does not mean it's not going to happen. Okay? So, keep going. Then we have the full moon. So, it's a little more than two weeks after the new moon. So, like, 15, 16 days and it's the again a high point of high energy if at least one of the focuses wishes spells what have you isn't is to work it may come true now and manifest or you may get like some intense signs that's why i was saying before during the first quarter and the us parts of the new moon or not the new moon, <laughs> the waxing phase. Um, if you're not seeing signs, don't worry, don't give up, and don't let your ego or fear eat you up. Because during the full moon, you may start to really feel or s see or ha have signs and sense that it's coming, or it may actually fully manifest. Um, check with yourself. Uh, you may get anxious um, and have crazy emotions during this phase during the full moon uh and it's part of that full moon sensation use the full moon to release and let go of any of that and any negativities or any bad things that might be getting in the way of the work that you've been doing for this cycle forgiveness of yourself and others and focus on good feelings. Embrace. Think of the positives that have happened in the first half of the moon cycle. So, again, I'm really bad with words. I was saying it out loud because I'm a reader. So, the disseminating phase. Ah, don't shoot me. All right. That's three to seven days after the full moon. So, this is like the beginning of the... Um, waning moon all right it's yeah it's the first fa phase of the waning moon phase <laughs> so after the full moon intensity you may feel like burnt out and you need to recuperate relax this is not the time to start new spells or work even things that we talked about are good to do during the waning moon earlier during this first three to seven days after the full moon just take a nice breather you can still say your affirmations and all that kind of stuff but nothing intensive at this point it's time to regroup and focus on yourself and making sure that you are grounded and good and so it's accepting and regrouping so accepting what is happening and regrouping and making sure you're okay. So then the third quarter, which is the second part of the waning moon. Um, I hope I said wait first part of the waning moon for the last one. Again, I'm sick trying to do this, so I'm sorry. But the, that was the wait, first part of the waning moon, not waxing, if I said that. Uh, <laughs> so the third quarter is seven and a half seven seven and a half to 11 days after the full moon 
And the key thing here is balance. You still may feel tired and needing to recuperate and relax, but this is not the resting period. You just had the resting period. This is when adjustments to the work that you've been doing for the full cycle may need to occur, re-examine and let go of certain things. This is a crossroads period. Um, break your bad habits, remove blocks that could be getting in the way. If you wanted to do uh, binding and banishing spells and all the spells that I talked about for the waning moon in the, the first part of this video, this would be a really good time to do that. So the balsamic, eh, me words, or dark moon is 10 and a half, 11 days after the full moon and the last until the new moon. We've realized what can and cannot happen at least during this particular moon cycle. If something that you've been working on throughout this whole moon cycle does not come to happen, does not manifest, you can do it again at another moon cycle. Each new moon has a different energy and purpose as I said earlier. So do not fret. You can always try again in the next cycle. Uh, we've already accepted, forgave, and surrendered throughout this cycle. And now it is time for healing. Think about your dreams, wishes, and let hope inspire and guide you and not fear. As you've noticed throughout this whole cycle, do not give in to fear. Continue on the hope. Even if at this point you do not see anything happening, do not give up. Um, you may need to let go again of certain things and move on and start certain work again at the next new moon. But remember the importance of what each one represents again. This is another time to let go of blocks and negatives that may be getting in your way. Um, it's also a good time to kind of look at the things that you did put out your intentions, your wishes, and the work that you were doing this whole cycle, and the ones that may not have shown any progress, you might want to rethink, or not rethink, but like think really deep about, well, was this for the greater good of me? Um, what could have gotten in the way, and what can I do differently during the next new moon? You can also think of did I phrase things right? Maybe use a different herb or a different oil or whatever with the actual spell work. Um, think about what you could do differently as well. But remember to keep hope alive and stay positive. So that's all I have. And I understand like the dark moon is at the end of that part. But I just said both together because they both do the same. So like, yeah. Um... I'm sorry again for being sick. I get sick a lot. I have a toddler, so it happens. So I apologize for that. Uh, this was a requested video, so I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, if you liked this video, please like. Please share. Subscribe if you have not yet. You Click the bell so that you get notified when I do post videos. I do know that I used to get a bit more views. Um, but I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I just like talking about this stuff, but, um, I don't want you to miss a video if you are interested. So, yeah, and check out my shop because, you know, uh, support, well, maybe not your local, I always say support your local witch, support your small business witch. Um, I love you all and have a great rest of the week. Blessed be.